Hello and welcome to this uh, lab on the STMWIN tool using the Cubemix. In this uh, lab, we will use the Cubemix version 4.25, the Cube firmware for the F4 platform version 1.18, the board will be the STM32F469 Discovery, and the IDE will be a system workbench for STM32. The lab is split in three steps. The step zero is the opening of a prepared Cubemix project. We will then review all the peripherals that are already enabled for the graphics. Then we will finalize the graphics configuration and generate the System Workbench project. The step zero will be the basic appearance of the demonstrator. In the step one, we will enhance the default graphical user interface appearance, setting some bitmaps to the buttons and also a background image. And in the step two, we will add some interactions using the touchscreen. So enabling the touchscreen and uh, handle the interaction in the graphical user interface. The STM Win is an object-oriented C code framework. Uh, the library supports all the STM32 boards. It has a hardware abstraction layer based on touch and display ST driver. And the new board supports are handled directly by ST. There is a special agreement between Seeger that provides AMWIN and ST so that ST get the full source code and can rebuild the library based on STM32 boards optimizations. Regarding the graphical user interface development phase, there are several tools involved in the development phase. First, you have some uh, graphical user interface content importation using some tools like BMP converter or font converter and also JPEG to movie converter. These tools are mainly used to convert media files such as uh, bitmaps or fonts or moving JPEGs to C code. The graphical user interface appearance is handled by the GRI Builder. The GRI Builder is provided by Seeger also. It's not a very advanced tool, but at least it can provide a skeleton for uh, the graphical user interface. Don't expect to build your entire uh, user interface in this tool. It has some limitation, but at least it's a good starting point. Regarding the graphical user interface logic, it has to be done in the external editor, the, the chosen one. Here it's skill, so you will see that we will modify directly uh, the MWIN's source code to uh, handle the logic, the interaction with the graphical user interface. The build is done also uh, using the chosen IDE. It can be kill, IR, or SA6. And it's the same for the platform integration. And finally, there is a prototyping tool that can be run on a PC using the Visual Studio Express PC simulator. Regarding the support, ST provides uh, an application note which is AM4323. You, of course, have the full API documentation in the UM03001. And for a more advanced question, uh, just ask the online support on myst.com. The demonstrator are located in the STM32 cube firmware. For the, this lab, we will use uh, this one. So the F4 cube firmware, with the version is 1.18 and the platform will be the STM32469 Discovery. So we will now open the prepared project. With this MOOC, you will have access to an archive called STMWinLabs version 2.0 materials.zip. Uh, these files contain the lab folder, and in the lab folder, you have all the content needed for this lab. So first, we will launch the Cubemix 4.25 and then load the project from the archive. So here is the Cubemix tool. So it's the beta version for the 4.25 version. Uh, we will open the project located in this uh, hierarchy. So here you can see I unzip the archive in the C drive directly. So the lab folder contains an asset folder, which contains uh, the images of the demonstrator. The project folder contains the IOC file, which is the prepared project for QMX. And each step folder contains uh, the source code for the various steps of the lab. We will see that later. So first, let's open the IOC project. Okay, now the project is open. 
So let me first uh, show you that in the project folder, for the moment, there is only this IOC file. This is the prepared QMMX project, which is actually displayed here. Once we will have generated the source code corresponding to this project, this folder was, will be populated with the, all the necessary source code file. So in terms of uh, peripherals, you can see here there is a new item called graphics and we, in which STMWIN is enabled and also graphics acceleration with the MA2T. To enable this graphics option, you have to enable several peripherals first. The peripherals are the CRC that must be enabled because there is a CRC check when AMWIN library starts to check that the, it's running on the STM32 platform. So this is a, a security uh, peripheral. Then you have to enable the DMA2D because the AMWIN library, as uh, ST provides it, makes intensive use of the DMA2D acceleration. On this specific platform, we use the DSI host because the screen is connected in DSI. So it's a special interface, but we could also use the FMC directly or the LTDC. The FMC is, however, enabled also because we need some SDRAM to store the frame buffer of the demonstrator. And the LTDC is also enabled in RGB 888, so it's a 24 bits, in DSI mode. So these are the main peripherals required to enable the graphics. On the clock configuration, we are running at 180 MHz and the pixel clock of the LTDC is 25 MHz. Let's go now to the configuration panel. There are two new buttons on this, uh, on this tab, which are the graphics and the graphics simulator. Let's have a quick view on the graphics simulator. This graphics simulator gives a lot of information on the current configuration, of course, but on a, a simulated one also. So this is the configuration that is set for this demonstration. Don't pay attention too much on the screen size because it's a very specific to this display that we have to split the screen in two in order to avoid some artifacts. Usually you should have here 800 and not 400. But for this specific board, we have to use a trick to split the screen in two to have a perfect display. So the LTDC is enabled, the Quad SPI is not, and the SDRAM is enabled, of course. And here on the lower part, you have the information on the pixel clock that are feasible with these settings. And if you want to test others, you have to uh, adapt these settings on the simulator configuration part and uh, it will be displayed on this uh, on this part. So the results here are different scenarios. If you, are, you unfold all of them. So you have different scenarios. First, build the image using the internal flash and external SDRAM on a 16 uh, bit per pixel frame buffer. Build an image and display it using internal flash and external SDRAM. These scenarios give some numbers, some pixel clocks and some timings, depending on which memory you use to store your input images and to store your frame buffer. Of course, if you store your frame buffer, for example, in flash, you will have terrible performances, so you better store them in SDRAM, but the SDRAM may not be able to contain all your input images, so they will be put in the external or internal flash. In the end, the frame buffer will be in the SDRAM or in the SRAM. Usually the SRAM is not sufficient to contain a full frame buffer. So this can give some interesting information on the pixel clock required uh, depending on the scenarios. Before going to the graphics options, we need to check uh, that the cube firmware has been found by the tool. So we go just to project and settings and check that this uh, this pass is good. So this one is good. It's the curve firmware F4 1.18 and my MCU reference is the 469. 
So this, this part is OK. I will now launch the graphic options. So the first tab shows the general graphics uh, options, uh, which are already configured based on the LTDC configuration and on, a, on the DSC host also. So these are almost filled automatically, except for this one that must be enabled. So this one will allow us to launch the GUI Builder tool directly from the Cubemix, clicking on this button. And the graphical uh, user interface builder tool is located in the cube firmware. That's why we have to be sure that it's been uh, correctly found by the tool. Then we have to update the dimension of the display. So it's 800 by 480. The driver is fine. The number of virtual screen is uh, OK also, but we have to set the number of buffers to two. Three could be also accepted, but two frame buffer for this kind of demo is uh, sufficient. The color conversion, we will set it to uh, GRICC M8888 inverted. This is very specific also to the current version of AMWIN. This color conversion is because this current version of AMWIN was not supported natively the RRGB format. Instead, it supports the BGRA format. So we have to specify that it's an inverted format of the 8888 RGB format. And then this is OK, except for uh, the LCD screen. We have to update it because this screen has an internal uh, controller. So we have key which is called the uh, OTM uh, 8009A. So we have to set it. So it's a landscape orientation and a RGB 888 format. Then we go to the STMWIN tab. For the this demo, we will use a uh, window uh, category. Uh, this is only uh, related to the name of the file that will be generated. You can see here that all the grade information are, are automatically filled uh, based on the parameter that we set, either on this uh, or on the LTDC or DSI uh, peripheral. For example, this uh, format is automatically uh, taken from the LTDC uh, configuration, but some parameters still have to be configured uh, in this uh, dialog box. So this is OK for the STM win. And regarding the other uh, tab we have here for this specific screen uh, to uh, select this GPIO uh, because it's the reset pin uh, that is configured on this uh, PH7 GPIO. So now we can launch uh, the GUI Builder from the Cubemix. So let's click on the Execute button. So here is the graphical user interface builder tool, GUI builder tool. So let's design uh, our first version of the demonstrator. It will contain first a background image. Let's put it at the right size. So it's 800 by 480. Okay. So for now, there is no actual image associated to this image uh, element. We will set it uh, later. And we can add uh, some buttons also that we will use uh, later. And uh, that's it, in fact. Maybe a, a one more button. Okay. So now we have a first ugly graphical user interface. We will save it. And it will automatically generate a window dlg.c file. So here it's already existing, so it's, it's uh, replacing it, and we can close. So let's apply all these settings and close this window. Now we can generate the code, but before that, let's go to the project settings to check that first system raw bench for STM32 is selected as the IDE. You have also kill or IR and the true studio the solution from Atolic that has been uh, bought by uh, ST will be available in the next release as well as the Mac file uh, and other toolchains. 
So we are, here we choose the STM, uh, the system workbench for STM32. In the code generator tab, just be sure that you have this option checked. This allows to keep the code that you edited outside the Kubemix uh, when we, you regenerate the code from the Kubemix. If you edit the code between specific tags, then your code will be kept when regenerating the code from the Kubemix. For example, if you add a peripheral from the Kubemix, you regenerate, then we'll, you will keep the code that you put in specific tags. And that's it. So we generate the code. You will see that for the build uh, processes, not for this one, which is quite fast, but for other uh, processing, are we going fast forward? So don't be afraid, your PC is not slow, but the video is fast forward. So we can now open the project. It will launch System Workbench and import automatically the project that we generated. In the meantime, I can show you that in the folder that only contained previously this IOC file, it now contains all the source code. You can see that all the source code has been imported or generated from the profile of the Kubemix tool. So here we come with the system raw bench tool and here is our project. And you can see, for example, that the, in the STM win, we have here the file that has been generated using the gray designer. For now, we can already build the code and flash it on the board. That's what we will do. And then we will enhance the current demonstrator. At this moment, you will see that we have a, a, a quite an ugly demonstrator with default button appearance and a default bitmap for the, the background image that we set. So let's launch the build in the fast forward mode. So now the code is built. We have an X file and we will flash it directly on the board. So just right click on the project and use the command debug as AC6. So now the code is flashed and we will go and you can see on the board the ugly demonstrator. So now let's go back to the input files of the labs. We have three steps, the step zero, step one, and step two. In fact, the step zero is the one we already done. So we will not use this, these input files. It's just make, uh, make a, a, an empty demonstrator uh, screen. We will use directly the step one. So to use them, we, uh, we use a, a file comparator tool, which is called Beyond Compare, but you can use uh, any other tool. So as you can see, the only difference is an extra file, which is called resources.h. This file contains the C table for all the images of the demonstrator. The images are those, these ones. You can see the butterfly, the blue, green, pink, and yellow, as well as the, this little butterfly in the only black and white uh, version, and uh, some home button, mail button, and the logo. Of course, the background image is also contained in this file. This is why it's uh, six megabytes uh, large. So we will copy the, directly this, this file. And then there is some update in the window dlg.c. And we will see why. So first, of course, to include the resources.h. The button here, uh, we defined only four buttons and uh, a background image. 
in the actual demonstrator there is also uh, two more images and some text also so we will add this this one is no more useful this table is the default uh, background image so it's the gray square that we can see on the screen uh, it is no more useful because we will replace it with a, a nicer image but this the table corresponding to this nicer image will be in the resources.h file the idea is to keep uh, this uh, window dlg.c file readable if you put all the images as suitable in it you will get a very large file but also uh, uh, very hard to read because uh, the source code will be at the end uh, just before the images so we will remove these images here is the default location of uh, each button and images and we have here uh, callback functions for each button these callback functions are needed because we want to change the default appearance of buttons uh, the buttons uh, have a paint message that will be called each time the button needs to be refreshed and in this case we will draw the bitmap corresponding for example here it's the home button the mail button and the butterfly button so we have to overread the default refresh functions and also this one then these two variables are no more needed and here it's the callback the main callback of the graphical user interface which is called as soon as something happened an event happened so the, an event can be a button pressed can be a, a touch information or also uh, some uh, refresh of a widget and here is the init dialog is the message that is received when uh, first creating the window and in this case we will draw the background image and each button with its corresponding image and also setting as you can see do we set the callback for each button and the callbacks are the one we just uh, added before and finally we have also to call to force a repaint of the window at the end so regarding the system workbench normally it has been updated accordingly if we go to the window dlg.c we can see that all that we did uh, is, uh, is there and we need to refresh the project so that the resources.h appears also the system robbench uh, automatically scans the folder hierarchy on the PC but it doesn't mean that the include file will be automatically found and you can see in these files that you have uh, here the background image so it's mostly made of white color so this one is for the transparency which is fully opaque and uh, this three value in fact is three you have two F per value uh, it means uh, a maximum value for uh, R, G, and B, and which is makes white, but it's not uh, all white, of course. There is at some points other values here, for example, and you have also the button, um, the buttons. So here's the mail button with the, the the corresponding image so let's let's build again the this demo and flash it again that's done and you can see that the window dlg.c that we modified has been uh, rebuilt only this one so let's flash on the board So after flashing, like many IDEs, the, um, the function, the execution is stopped automatically just at the beginning of the main function. 
So we, make, we need to make a go. We show it's a resume here to actually run the application. And as you can see on the screen, the demo is much nicer like this, but there is still no interaction possible for the moment. And the blue uh, butterfly is an image that will be able to move uh, using the touch display uh, in the next step. So back to the input files of the lab. We are now in the step two. So we will compare the step two files with uh, the current project. For this step two, we have to first add the, the low level drivers for the touch uh, functionality of the, the display. Uh, this can be found in the BSP folder. It's this one. So let's copy this driver. Uh, let's go now to the file we already know, which is window.dlg.c. There is not much update in this one. There is a status of the for the butterfly for the image, the butterfly image. You will see its use later. We have to set uh, movable the butterfly um, image, the blue one that I show you on the screen. In order to move it with the touch screen, we have to set it as movable. That's the AMWIN API. And here, this is the, the default action of the home button. So the home button will set back the butterfly image to its original place and set it to blue. So that's why you have a, a move item to this position and the set image to a butterfly blue. Then another button, the butterfly one, there is a small white butterfly button. Uh, this one will change the color of the larger image uh, button. So you will see that each time we touch the button, the butterfly button, the small one, the bigger butterfly will change its color. So it will change from uh, yellow to blue. It will be yellow, pink, green and blue. And finally, we have to enable the motion in general uh, for this, uh, this uh, dialog box. So that's it for the window dlg.c file. On top of the low level uh, touch driver, we need to have some uh, higher level drivers uh, for the touch screen, which are dedicated to, the, to this board and uh, which are contained here. So these two files. And these two files are also dependent on uh, more uh, generic uh, definitions that are contained in these ones. So that's it for the application part. And that's it, in fact, for the step two in general, except for the main, of course, the main dot C. In the main dot C, we need to initialize the, the touch screen, especially a timer, because in this demonstrator, the implementation of the touch screen is in polling mode but it can also work in the interrupt mode, which means that we are pulling the, the touch driver constantly uh, until we see some modification on the, on the coordinates. But there could also be an interrupt falling each time we, we touch the screen. Depends on, the, on your requirements. In this uh, demonstrator, it's in polling, so we have to initialize a timer dedicated to the touch screen. On each expiration of the time, this timer, we will check the touch uh, coordinates. So we initialize it. And here's the code for the touch, the timer initialization, and but also 
the touch uh, initialization. Here we, are, we call the BSP TS init on uh, the full size uh, screen. And this is what we do uh, when the, uh, an update of the touch coordinate is detected. And finally, the include file must be also dated to get the driver, uh, the higher level driver uh, for the touchscreen. So let's go now back to the system or bench. So we will launch the build. First refresh. So we can see now in driver you have BSP. You have we have our, our low level driver. So as you can see, there is no error, uh, which is in fact normal because when we added uh, the driver here, in fact the, the, the system workbench project detected some new files and it detected some C file. So it added it automatically to the file that has must be com uh, compiled. And since the include file is in the same folder, it's not an issue. But just keep in mind that if we, we could have here uh, have had some uh, SRC folder and uh, include folder. And then uh, the system will have found the C file, but not the pass to the include file. So in this case, you, we do not have to modify the project, but it could happen. So let's keep it this in mind. And we now can uh, flash the final version of the demonstrator. So now the system is uh, stopped at the beginning of the main function. We will let it go. And now I can move the butterfly, change its color, and put it back to its original position. So that's it for this demonstrator. I hope you enjoyed this session and see you in the next MOOC.